it over the right side. And Maiden is in. The touchdown for San Diego State. Just in 10, Maiden is going to run it. Instead, he throws. What a pass. It's Kristen into the end zone. Jalen Maiden waltzes into the end zone. Maiden to pass. Gets the flat. Touchdown, Aztecs. Jesse Matthews. Another low snap. Hainer to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown for now. Mims into the end zone. Touchdown, Fresno State, 109 on the clock. It's bobbled momentarily. The ball is loose. And there is life in Fresno for the Bulldogs. Hayner, complete. Remigio on the move. Touchdown, Nico Remigio. And from off the mat. Jake Hayner off the mat, brings the Bulldogs back in a huge victory for Fresno State. Oh, man. Are you guys drinking, dude? Or am I the only one? I the dude, only I'm, one? Not, I'm not drinking for the rest of the week after. <laughs> Yeah, after this, after the holiday week, at the Halloween weekend, dude, I, I'm, I'm, I went to bed all early last night. I was thinking I was in bed by like eight thirty. <laughs> I went to bed at nine, two nights in a row after that fucking okay, shit show that we watched. Okay, uh, welcome back, everybody, to the Sons of Montezuma podcast. Right now. Make sure you are taking advantage of 10% off in the Sons of Monty shop. You can get this awesome Kiss the Rings hoodie that I am wearing. Basketball season is here to save us. Thank God. Because if you guys were watching the game, look at James showing it off. We were, we're in the basketball <laughs> mood, right? We got we to gotta turn the page somehow. So I am Mateo San Diego. You can find me at Mateo San Diego on Twitter. You can find us at Sons of Monty also on Twitter. And I'm joined by my two co-hosts, K5 James Sport and the Kiss the Ring shirt. Man, good to see you, dude. How you doing? Good, good. What's up? What's up? We live to fight another day, and it's good to see you, man. So I was chilling this past weekend watching the game with the one and only dirtiest of the dance. Yo, 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 yo. At D Morton 78 Dirt Bull. What's going on, man? Um, not much, man. How you doing? You know what? My energy is high, man. I, I'm. I thought I'd be feeling worse. You know, I mean, the the game sucked. Everybody knows the Aztecs blew it. It was a rivalry game that we'll never forget. This game against Fresno State had to be one of the all time nightmare games in Aztecs history. There's a few that pop out in my mind. Uh, we wrote about it in the article that. BYU 52-52 tie. I was there at that game. It was an insane comeback. It scarred me for life. A lot of emotional damage. Emotional damage. I think that 96 loss on the road against UNLV, a winless UNLV when the WAC championship was, was at stake. I, I wasn't really that plugged in, to be honest with you, that year. But that's a record-setting loss right there. But what we saw on Saturday, guys, th this was this was a punch in the gut, man. This game was, oh man, it was it was pretty tough. It was pretty tough. Before we go into all the statistics and all the performances, it was Halloween weekend, right? Now, me, I believe in a good and an evil. I do believe that exists out there. <laughs> I, I do believe in like paranormal activities and like spiritual <laughs> things. Like I actually do. But what I experienced there last that night with you, Dan, was like something I had never really, really, really experienced in, in terms of sports. And it kind of like it, it freaked me out. I know it freaked Eddie out, our your neighbor, and we were just like, what like what just happened right now? Because that game, there was no reason why we should have lost that game everything like i think it was like a 98 percent percentile chance that we should have won that game with like two minutes left in the game i mean those are pretty crazy odds so this was such a fluky game we'll get into it and all that good stuff but 
I'm holding you personally responsible for this loss. I, <laughs> I think I think the score predictor actually said like 98% up till that kickoff. Up until the kickoff. Yeah, the the onside. That, the onside kick. Like it was still like up in the upper 90s, I want to say. So 30, 32 to 28, the Aztecs lost. For those of you who, who have been living under a rock and not in San Diego, I mean, you know, it's Halloween, man. There's some spooky stuff going on, and it definitely happened on Saturday night. But do, do you care to explain anything, Dan? Do you care, do you care to talk Well, a couple. One thing is, is, you know, you were doing a comparison. I'll switch sports to compare. It was like the Creighton game, dude. It was like the Creighton <laughs> basketball game. That's exactly like it, what it was. Don't get and I remember, started. and I remember watching that game was towards the end, and I got mad at my mom because she said they're gonna win. <laughs> yeah, I got mad yeah. at her. And I, I was actually sitting with Eddie, and he's like, "Dude, this is all awkward." Because I got mad at her because you know I was doing that stupid jinx <laughs> shit that you want to talk about right now. Yes, and I could, I've been since like I since then I was like, "Dude, my God, that's so stupid." Well, I mean, can't believe in that. And then like. So now I'm just gonna say it, and and you know what? I used to get I get mad at James when he does it. You know, James d- did it like, oh, we're gonna kill Arizona. You know, like <laughs> shit. Like that. His overconfidence. So I mean, dude, we watched that game, and like there was no reason to think that they were gonna lose that. Game. If you want to crown like, it, if, if, crown if you were ass. ever gonna be confident in a win, I mean, you got to be confident there. I mean, otherwise, what the hell? What are we even doing? That uh, that game was like a play or two away from like the second quarter until the fourth quarter. It was always like a play or two away from being a blowout. Yeah. Like that's that's how confident I was. I was like, dude, going into halftime, I was pissed that, you know, we can talk about that, the collapse at halftime with, with due to our right tackle. But um, it was just a play or two away from like, this game's over. Like they are going to, dominate this game it's all it's they it's are who we just a player two away and it's going to turn into a laugher and we let them and they just ne- they were never able to hit that one or two plays to make it happen and like like you were talking about you guys were at dance party and i was out at a halloween costume contest at at a, a bar and i'm kind of watching the game on my phone and i i, I was kind of going in and out so i didn't see like the little, mini comeback that fresno state had well, then they, they scored. I saw the, them score their final, well, the second of the last touchdown they scored. I was like, okay, they're going to onside kick it. We're going to get the ball, run the clock out. We should be good. And like right, right. around that, then they called me, okay, we're doing the costume contest. So I just left it. I was like, cool, I'll come back. I'm going to go do this thing. And I'll come back and I'll check the score. We're going to win. I already was in the money because I bet a ton of money on San Diego State plus 10. So I was like in a good <laughs> mood. I was like feeling myself. And man, when I came back after that contest, looked at the score, I was like, what the hell did I miss? <laughs> see, see, Matt, so I guess James kind of jinxed it too, you know? <laughs> I was, said we should. I said we should. Yeah. I didn't say we are good. I said we should be good. I mean... Okay. <laughs> I, I think it's worth talking about, though, guys, because, listen, it's not... You know, I, I'm messing around with you, Dan. Like, I, they're in the moment. Eddie called you out. Your neighbor called you out. Like, don't say what you said. Don't say that. Like, we were all freaking out when you said what you said. I'm not going to repeat it, but you had some words that, like, you you didn't want to give into the whole, the whole, you know, jinx, the whole, you know, superstition thing. But it's a real thing. A lot of people. It's not just you. It's not just James. It's not just myself. Like, a lot of people that are diehard fans, no matter what team you are have these rituals have these jinx i mean just look at san diego sports guys that's the famous thing with san diego sports we're cursed we're a cursed city when it comes to sports right the padres did a lot of good this year to break that 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 stronghold that the dodgers had on us right but then they lose to the phillies the phillies are, are they're gonna well, win it all man it's kind, of, kind of sticking with the padres to the curse thing the that mural company they put up that mural of the chicken stepping on the the philly the fanatic, fanatic. And look what happened. <laughs> they took you down guys, real quick. You guys know <laughs> that it's not true. Like, I, you guys know we can't impact the game. Because right? look, at, for, for what, why would it just be what one person says and not the other? You know, it's a dumb, I don't even know why we're having this conversation. Ra- rationally, Dan, of course okay. we know we have zero impact on the game. Rationally, we, we know that. <laughs> But there's still that little part of your brain, no matter what, you're like, why do you think I specifically said we should be good? I consciously, I don't want to say, oh, this game's over. I said, 
we should be good. I told. Well, them. I mean, at that point, they were going for the onside kick, so I mean, they might get it. You know, <laughs> I kid you not. I kid you not, guys. As that game was getting closer and closer, my brother sent me a text. I don't have a good feeling about this game, dude. And we still had the eleven point lead at that time. Another text. This is what happens when you can't run the ball. It, but all I'm saying is, I sat there and I, I. I saw the the look in Eddie's eyes after you said it and just like I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know what you were talking about. I was just like, what? What are you talking about? Like what what's going on here? I don't even remember what I said actually. Yeah, I know. It, it was a fun night. And <laughs> you said what you said and, and Eddie was like, Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? We all looked at each other. I had no idea what he was talking about. And literally the next thing you know, touchdown, onside kick touchdown again like within a matter of like a minute of real time minute you know 12 <laughs> seconds game time and it was just something i had personally never experienced like in the moment that quickly to where yeah we all kind of oh man we're, we're gonna lose this game like creighton that, that was a that was a crazy game right but that that was that wasn't as sudden of, of you know things that just happened like right there in that moment Anyways, I bring it up. It was Halloween. It was a spooky weekend. I loved your neighborhood, man. Everybody's out there with their haunted houses. And it was a great time. At the end of the day, like, how can you explain what happened? We're going to try to, but I, will, I couldn't I will explain say, that. Dude, I will say, like, real, like, really speaking, that game took a lot out of me. Honestly, <laughs> I've been, like, depressed, like, these this all the way. I'm still not even back now. I don't even want to talk as to you i mean you i'm here doing this but <laughs> i'd rather not do it you know it, it really i think it do for me for the football team i think it's like a a year killer i really do man it's hard like you had we have to win that game you just have to or, it's not like we had a lot of uh, good grace to fall back on so far in this year you know it's not like we piled up some wins um that we shouldn't have like we don't have that you know so you, it really, man, it, that game, I woke up, like I was, I was actually really, it was real when I said, when I woke up, I hoped I was like dreaming that we <laughs> lost that game. You know, I had a lot to drink. I thought maybe like it was just a crazy dream. Sure enough, I see your James text and like at eight or nine in the morning, like, did we really lose that game? <laughs> You're not alone, man. Nobody wants to think about that game anymore i guarantee you for all five listeners that are hearing us right now like they, they don't want to they don't want to finish this episode of this podcast they don't want to hear it why do you want to remind yourself of, of the pain and and the emotional damage that we went through like, nobody wants to to do it but we have to you know like we got to explain what happened you know we got to make some kind of sense out of it i mean i don't dude from like i know people are going to complain about the conservative nature of, of the team and that's fair or whatever but it was fluky you know <laughs> like you're like you, say we win that game we win by 11. nobody's complaining about the the conservative nature of the team you know like it's it was I, like i wouldn't judge like if anything like you said matt you, you said it perfectly like it was like one of the worst losses ever, but you felt good about the team type thing. Yeah. Like, cause they looked good. You know, there, they, there are some moments where they looked really good. And yeah. Yeah. Like, I, like I'm disappointed with the continued inability to run the ball. Well, um, but I mean, the offense moved really well, other than that, other than them trying to run a five minute offense to kill a clock because they can't run the ball with any consistency. The offense looked really good. Other than that. So that, like you said, that that was really something cool. Like that first half was like one of the best first half of a San Diego State offensive performance I've seen in. Yeah, I know. I can't even think of a, a time as good as that. That the the offense looks so good and so crisp and so tight up until that that last attempt to get some points right before half. That's when they kind of the wheels kind of fell off as far as their efficiency and and discipline. Like how often Matt is Jesse Matthews going to? Drop that punt, dude. What they've done in the past is they would bring Matthews in for the safety, like for the safety hands, the safeness right. of him catching it. Yeah. And I think maybe Bird could have been banged up too or something. Because, I mean, Bird's going to get those. 
I, I know they put Matthews in there like last week is, or the week before too, but he was birds banged up. So it's, I don't know, dude, just a lot. I, and they just shot themselves in the foot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really, like it, it, it God, it's been discussed. The way I felt this whole week is terrible. <laughs> I and mean, I think a win at UNO against UNLV doesn't erase it, honestly. No, like it, no, no, not at all. This this game had a lot on the line, guys. I mean, th- you're right, Dan. This game, I hate to say it, but this game really was the season. I mean, all the goals of a Mountain West championship were before us in this game. Not only that, but just the rivalry. You want to get the trophy back. You, you hate to lose to Fresno. Like, nobody likes to lose to Fresno. Like, they, they have no business beating us, but they, you know, they've gotten the better of us the last few years. You got to, got to, Respect that. So this game, you know, in our preview that I did with the the guys from the Beware of Bulldogs, you know, we spoke about it, that this offense had to go through hell just to get to this point in this game. And so to see that first half, like you said, James, like it was beautiful to watch. Me and Dan were, were just enjoying that first half, the fluidity of the offense, the smoothness, to see Jalen Maiden go out there again and not just play well, but I mean, he looked like the best player out there on the field, you know, even with Hayner back there, you know, somehow coming back for this game, you know, knowing he was injured for the last, you know, four or five weeks. Jalen Mann looked like the best player out there on the field. He could run, he could throw, he was making all the right reads, all the right decisions, touch with the pass. Like You couldn't have asked for a better performance for the most part. So there's a lot to be positive about. But this game was the season. And now that we're basically two games behind Fresno because they have the tiebreaker and a game better than us in the division. I mean, can we just say it? it's done? Division's done. Fresno is going to walk away with this division. Their schedule coming up is they have all the easiest teams left in, in the division. So there's no reason to think that they're going to have a repeat performance like last year and lose more games. Uh, our, and, and let us sneak in there. Well, especially the air being back now. So it's a, right. Yeah. Right. Our only prayer is they've got Wyoming at home. I think that's a more difficult game than, you know, most yeah. people are saying. I think that's a possible loss. Yeah. The only prayer other than Wyoming is UNLV, but, you know, because it's at UNLV, but it just depends. UNLV has been nothing like they were in the first half of the season. So that's, that's like the odds are very, not very good for us that, you and can pull off that upset against Fresno State. And that also makes you wonder how, how this team is going to feel coming into this game against UNLV. We can get into it a little bit later when we talk about a preview in the UNLV game, but you think there's got to be a little bit of a hangover after losing a game like that against Fresno and realizing your, your chances at a division championship and a Mountain West championship are pretty much done. Like how, how, how are they going to be able to rally and come back against UNLV this Saturday? I think the hardest part for me when I was watching it was that first half, you're envisioning, dude, we're going to win this fucking division. Like, yeah. we finally have it going. We have it going. We're going to win. Like, you're thinking, dude, no one's ever going to be, be able to stop this offense. With And with our schedule coming up, like, this is our, it's our, we're going to win the division. To go from that to where losing that game and now you're just, you feel like you just took a kick to the nuts. like. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how the team's going to get up for UNLV, honestly. I mean, yeah. the coaches have to do their job. They'll get them ready, but I'm not ready. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, that's the challenge, right? You can't, let, you can't let Fresno beat you twice. We, we've heard, you know, Coach Fisher on the basketball side always say that, you know, you lose a game, okay, you can't let that team beat you twice. So the only way that this team can really get it together this week is to, okay, Mountain West Championship, that goal is probably not realistic anymore. But the next goal under that that you have at the beginning of the year is to be bowl eligible, right? So that's the next goal they got to focus in on because where we're sitting now, what are we, four and four? Is is that pretty much it, right? Two-thirds of the season is done, guys. Two-thirds. We're at the last four games. And this is the chance you, you got to go at least, you know, two and two, but that's not a guarantee to get you in a bowl game. You got to go three and one minimum. And honestly, too, with our schedule, the way it is, 
I think they can win the next four games. Like, I, I, I would bet money that they're going to win the next four games. Um, I'm not as, I mean, I guess San Jose State could be tough, but like, I'm not really worried. I, what I saw, what I saw that team with their plan, like, if they're, if they let the reins off, man, what I saw from that team is like, I mean, there was some creative play calling, like, yeah, some good, you saw some great athletes on offense. Just, yeah. Man. Like you said, you didn't want to talk about you. Know, you don't want to blame it on the the play calling and the conservativeness of the offense. And I agree with you to an extent, but at at a certain point, you got to realize, like, look, stuff isn't getting done. This team is getting some momentum. We need to just let our best player make plays. And I felt like they needed to put the ball in Maiden's hands just to like, hey, put the brakes on their momentum, and let let us get some momentum going. And so that that's like a that's like a a. a I guess you'd call it a preference thing, I guess. I understand what Hope wants to do is he wants his team to be like physical, run that five-minute offense to kill a game. But at a certain point, you see this team like making a fiery comeback. You got to do something to kill that comeback. And it might be time to just, all right, let's run the normal offense again. Let's get back and let's try to get some points in the air, however we got to do it. And I'm, I'm not saying that like they're not – I mean, you could definitely blame them for being too conservative – I'm just saying, like, the, with them being so conservative, a lot still had to go wrong yeah. for them to be put in that position. Um, obviously, hindsight, you want them like, do they? We're he could the the receivers were wide open, <laughs> like <laughs> the game fi- or the passing offense finally looked easy. Like we had, we've talked about that earlier in the season, how hard everything looks, and to I mean, yeah, man. <laughs> well, I enjoy listening to Ryan Lindley. He spoke uh, Tuesday morning, this morning on 760 with D Smith and just, you know, giving a lot of praise to Jalen Maiden, you know, kind of sharing his experience working with with him in these few uh, been about less than a month, you know, and to see what they've done together. You know, uh, I think. James has been calling for it. You know, you called for it like right after the first game made and played that, you know, this offense needs to start throwing the ball a little more, start letting that open up the run game a little more. And, and I think all Aztec Nation agrees with you. <laughs> I think after this game, especially people will agree. It's going to it's going to take a little time. But, you know, hearing Lindley talk about Maiden was pretty refreshing. I, I think it will kind of get to that point this season because they need to see what they have really have with Jalen. I, I think, you know, he's proven his worth, like what coach Hope told him that you got to make yourself, you got to make your worth enough to where they want to bring you back next year. Right. If he didn't prove it in those first two games, he's definitely proved it in this game, at least to me. And I, I think everybody feels that way strongly as well. Everybody should be fired. If he, if he hasn't proven his worth. Yeah. They don't try to bring him back next year. That's that's crazy, man. He's played his tail off. And and dude, another thing I'm also kind of kind of bummed about <clears throat> is uh, like everybody has shit on Horton for like <laughs> like being our offensive coordinator and yeah. what he did in the past. And and, and I know James if I and I have spoke that like, dude, he's not opposed to passing. Like like right. we could have an explosive offense if you just let the reins off. And it, like he cut it. He's pretty much showed it. What he's done these last, you know, what three has it been? Three games now. Yeah. Like some of the, some of that, that dude, that play, that fake run, to, and then throw to Trisha was fucking brilliant. Man, like what, like what a beautiful play. Like I'm, I'm, I'll get shit from a lot of the people on the message board for saying this, but dude, I kind of want Horn as offensive coordinator. I mean, I, I, I'm not, I like, I, I'm completely fine with him as offensive coordinator next year. Um, people will hate it, people will whatever, but I dude, what he's done with this offense is like mind boggling. I mean, yeah, you gotta give him some credit here. I, I I yelled about it and argued about it back when everybody's complaining about him before. It's like, man, the, the guy has a track record. He's he's been an NFL quarterbacks coach, he's been an offensive coordinator in the Big Ten. You know, he's and he had some of the highest flying offenses when he was the head coach at UNLV in Nevada. It's like he knows the passing game. He's not a he's not a dumb coach. He's a very bright coach. And I think he was kind of been throttled back by the prior head coach when he was under him. And then in this situation, I I feel like that was kind of a 
a Brady Hoke thing saying, hey, run the five minute offense. Let's let's kill this game. Yeah. So I agree with you, Dan. It's like this guy, I, if, if it turns out that next year we're going into the year with uh, Horton as an offensive coordinator, Lindley back as a quarterback's coach, the rest of the staff the same, I, I'm totally fine with that. So let's talk a little bit about that, though, because it is seem it, it does seem to be the sentiment, right? A lot of people are blaming the coaches, blaming the game plan or or switching things up in the second half or, you know, tying Maiden down and not letting him. They, how, what do they say with uh, Russell Wilson? Got to let Russ cook. <laughs> <laughs> Got to let Jalen cook. Um my view is a little different, you know, and I, I got some pushback in the article, you know, because I, I tried to explain a little bit that, look, there's a lot of blame to go around in this game. It was a when you win, it's a team win. When you lose, especially a game like this, I mean, it was a team loss. Like like you said earlier, Dan, you know, despite going conservative, we were in position to win this game if you just simply recover the onside kick. Or before that, make a stop, get a stop, you know, or even before that on offense, get a first down, you get a first down, this game's over, (laughs) you run the clock out, they have no more timeouts. So even with that conservative uh, play calling, whatever you want to call it, we were in position, players didn't make plays, they didn't execute. And, you know, like I said, it's it's not taking full responsibility off the coaches, but you do have to put some accountability on the player. So let's talk about right before the end of the half. We're up big 21 to 10 with a chance to even add on more before the half. And, you know, we spoke very candidly about it. The offensive line is young, one of the youngest in the nation. And we saw not necessarily youth, but unfortunately, I, uh, you know, because you don't have to be young to make this type of mistake. Well, you know, the, the right tackle. Simmons took a swing at Fresno's player immediately after that gets a false start penalty. And before you know it, we're out of field goal range. That's points off the board, potential points off the board. Right. But the same thing happened in the third, no, the fourth quarter, the same thing happened where all we needed was a first down and we had another false start penalty. And instead of going from second and seven now you're at second and I think it was like 12 or something that drastically changes your your situation to close this game out under that conservative, you know, game plan to just run the clock out. So, you know, mistakes made, whether it's, you know, un- being undisciplined or, you know, turnovers, like there, there was a lot that was going on. I mean, believe me, Fresno tried to give us this win guys. I mean, how many turnovers, interceptions in the end zone, we blocked their field goal. I mean, they were basically giving us the game and then we would constantly just give it right back. So I don't think you can really blame coaches completely for that type of, uh, you know, performance and un- undisciplined mistakes. Oh, dude, I honestly read somewhere like on maybe an Aztec Mesa or something that he literally just, Brady Hope literally just signed like a contract extension and he's like the ninth Pay, best paid head coach in the conference or something like that. So I'm, I'm, so I'm pretty sure it's probably easy to get out of that, that contract with a low buyout, but we're not going to fire Brady Hoke, dude. They won 12 games last year. Am I the biggest Brady Hoke fan? Probably not. But do, it, is it like knowing how schools work is they're not going to fire the guy. They're just not. So I think talking up is pretty irrational. It does, it does nothing. For the, it doesn't help recruiting. It doesn't help. It, 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 it's nothing to help the, the team. It's not a rational thought. They expect Brady Hope to be fired or even in trouble at this point. Yeah. Now, yeah. the thing, what's going to get them in trouble if the off the field stuff, that's different. Anything of the off the field issues, if you bungled it, any of that stuff, okay. But from a pure performance standpoint, it's more likely that Brady Hope says, I'm done with this and retires than it is that they're going <laughs> to fire him. Yeah, yeah and, agreed. and going back to the offensive line thing, you know, that's that's a redshirt freshman and a senior, a redshirt senior, I believe, player that baited him, and he just got in his head. He got in a young kid's head. Um, I, I think he called him a, a, a bitch or something like that. I, I kind of just like reading his lips or whatever. 
and you know, he's, you know, these are young, aggressive kids, man. And I, I, yes, you should be more disciplined, but that's, that's a senior going, getting into the head of a redshirt freshman. So I, you don't want to, hopefully it's a situation he can grow from and learn from. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to like throw the kid under the bus for, for letting that happen. Cause you know, it's, it's, I mean, just think about it. It's your, it's your first big game in this rivalry game. You're, it's your first year starting and you're going up against a really good redshirt senior defensive end who's probably giving you some work. And then he starts talking trash to you and getting in your head as well. That's a, it's a tough situation, man, but hopefully, obviously you don't want it to happen again and hopefully he can learn from it. Definitely a learning experience or you hope would be a learning experience. And you know, the player's performance, it's not like the Aztecs played a perfect ball game. We got out to a big lead, but there were still plenty of mistakes. You know, Jalen made it and everybody wanted to just take the, take the cuffs off him, let him sling it around. He wasn't perfect by any means. That first possession out of the second half throws an interception when, you know, you should have came out in that first half, in that second half, excuse me, should have came out. And that should have been your opportunity to put even more points on the board. Uh, but, you know, it was a silly mistake, but it's a, it's a learning experience, you would hope. And, you know, you move on, go to the next play. But I just hate the hypotheticals like, oh, they should have did this and let them play to 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 deal with hypotheticals. I mean, that's that's such um, it's like it's such a bogus way to to argue against the coaches or against this game from from not judging what actually happened and what was actually done. Uh, I think one of the plays and I'll, I'll show it while while we're talking, because. Before we punted on that last possession, that last real possession that we had, it, on that fourth down run, it was an RPO. It was, it was basically up to Jalen to either make the handoff or throw the ball. And it was fourth and one. He gave it to Chance Bell. He got stopped on that fourth down, turnover on downs. But if you look at that play, I mean, it's, it's basically up to Jalen to make the read. And does he want to throw it? Does he want to hand it off? Jesse Matthews was right there, you know, looked like he was pretty much expecting to get the pass right there if Jalen was going to go with that option. He didn't go with that option. It, it probably would have been an easy first down, keep the chains moving, keep the clock running, but he didn't. So, you know, to, to just fully expect that this game would have been completely different or the outcome would have been different if we would have just threw the ball and just, you know, let him do whatever, like, you can't really deal in those hypotheticals because you just don't know. It's really easy to tear everything down that's already been built. Like people don't understand. You know, I hate it when people think like a bad season or a bad performance. Well, we got to fire this guy, he, this guy, this guy. Like not even understanding that this Aztecs football program has been built for over a decade now with these coaches whether all at different times, but it's this culture that they've built that's been successful. It's been unprecedented success. You're not going to tear that down, you know, uh, you know, because of, you know, yes, it was a terrible loss, but you're not going to tear everything that's been built down because of yeah. that. I saw a great response on Twitter and, and forgive me, I can't remember who it was. I think it was like Weed M Techs or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, his, his tweet was something to the effect of, it was responding to somebody who was saying, no, let's get rid of Brady Hoke and, blah, you know, and I was like, man, be careful what you wish for, because we all wanted to get rid of Horton and look what it got us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I saw that too. I thought it was pretty clever. Right? Yeah, it was great. It was, I, I, I wish I could remember who it was. So I could give him the credit. It was that guy. It was that weed and weed and text guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, ho hopefully somebody else saw that and they can, you know, if you see it, retweet it and like it, give, give them some run for that. Cause it was a great, great uh, quote. Defense, guys, that was one of the big things we wanted to see. This defense was going to have to play dominant. Ten points in that first half. The only reason why Fresno scored points is because we gave them the ball with short fields off of those blunders, right? So we got pressure on Hayner all day. It was great to see. Tavai had like two sacks. Michael Shawcroft was all over the field. Uh, Keyshawn Banks, you know, his presence was out there. I mean, guys were just putting pressure on Hayner all day. I was not expecting to see that, but I was happy to see it. Looks like they finally found their pass rush, huh? They, they, that was uh, that was pretty wild, man. They were, Hayner was running for his life. And, and you can't say – I know Fresno's right tackle went down, but it was going on even before that. So yeah, it's not like that they brought in that new tackle and that opened up a hole. It was 
they finally were starting to get to the quarterback like we've been expecting them to do with that very uh, experienced front six. I mean, it's just it's just so hard for me to see the positives right now. <laughs> like, because, uh, I mean, my last uh, – I remember them scoring two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, you know, and <laughs> making plays offensively of Fresno State. I so mean, let me ask you, let me ask you this, because when it comes to the defense – in that last drive or two, right? I mean, are you guys in favor of that prevent defense? Do you guys think the scheme should have be should have been changed up? We talked about the offense and the conservative play calling, but what about the defense? Well, on that last drive, I'm I'm totally fine with pre. They, I think they should have been even more prevent style on that last drive, um, the one they used to take the lead where basically it was one play. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, but I, I de- before that, no, the, the last drive they used to get within um, three points, definitely they should have just run the defense. In my, I've never been a big fan of going into prevent. If anything, you know, I, I'm okay with dropping more guys in the zone and stuff like that, but, but I, I still think you should rush four. Well, here's the thing on that, on that go ahead touchdown Fresno had, we actually brought five. <laughs> we oh, brought no. five, and there was one linebacker kind of kind of spying the the running back, right? So you brought pressure, and you had a, a linebacker kind of keeping his eye. He was pretty much in the box, though. So once that receiver made the catch, made one guy miss, he's gone, and, and there's nobody yeah. back there to, to chase after him. So you know, people, you can cry all you want and say, "Oh, we shouldn't play prevent defense." Well, then you don't play prevent, you get burned. Yeah, that that's last kind of what happens. They sh- to me, they should have been in like Hail Mary defense on that that last uh, series. That was it wasn't even really a series. What was there like forty seconds left? I-, I don't remember how much time left was exactly exactly. But in my opinion, that should have been that's the spot where you go prevent. It, you know, because you got to just keep them out of the end zone. <sighs> yeah, it's tough to give the positives when you when you get so angry over this. I'll thing. give you some positives, dude. I mean, <laughs> the run defense was great. Yeah. You know, Hayner ended up throwing for 400 yards. Um, but the the run defense was awesome. Yeah. They they couldn't run the ball at all. So that was nice to see. I mean, I, let's be honest, though. I mean, they, they didn't really attempt that many because they were playing from behind the whole time. But, I mean, Jordan Jordan Mims was rushed 13 times for 32 yards. Right. And that's – I mean, he was like, – he was going off the week before. Yeah. Um, Non-factor. Not factor in the game. And obviously the passing offense, if you want to switch over to offense now, the passing offense, that was like like Dan said, there was creativity, there was crispness, and it was it was fun to see. That first, like I said, that first half was man, I was having a blast. Cause I got to I got to watch the first half first first half at home before I went out to the bar. And I was like, oh hell yeah, I'm man, I'm gonna just kind of just check in on the score the rest of the night. I'm I'm good. I, I told my Told my mom's husband to record the game so I could come watch it when I got home. And <laughs> hell, I didn't want to watch the second half of that game. Uh, I tortured myself and watched it twice uh, since. <laughs> dude, I, I've forgotten so much of this. I was, dude, I was hammered. But <laughs> I, I mean, I've forgotten a lot of the details that you that you brought up. Like, oh yeah, that too. Oh yeah. This. <laughs> It had to. I had to go back and see. You had myself. to watch it, man. Dude, that would had kill to. me. <laughs> well, like I said, because there's so much good that came out of it, you know, that it's like, okay, was it really that good? Should I really be feeling good after such a horrible loss? And no, I don't feel any any better. I don't feel good, but there were a lot of positives that you have to build on. So all right, should we move on? Should we move on? Because there's there's a few other topics I want to ask you guys and get your opinions on. Yeah, so on. Uh, I don't really have much to say about UNLV, guys. It's homecoming. <laughs> like I, this, I, I don't know how many people are going to show up. There's going to be a lot of people still, I would think, because you know it's homecoming. People want to see the stadium for the first time. Probably coming in from out of town. Like homecoming is always a big deal. It, it just sucks that we have to go into the game under these circumstances, but. It is what it is, man. I I can't tell you anything about UNLV other than you know their starting quarterback's gonna be back, and you know that should be fun. Without him, their offense kind of fell off a cliff, man. 
Well, dude, the thing that's what sucks about the Fresno loss, dude. Like, it would, you know, how we're all just like, who knows, whatever, you know, like we would be breaking down this UNLV game. Like, it was like they were playing in the Super Bowl. Yeah. But, yeah. But it's weird. It just, it just kills you, man. Like, I can't even. I'm gonna go there because it's gonna be fun to be the game. I'm gonna have my kids there. I'm gonna hang out with you guys. It's gonna be fun. And see a nice stadium, cheer the Aztecs on. But man, big picture wise, it's a I don't have that crazy excitement, motivation to break down the game. Yeah. But your coach C doesn't either. <laughs> oh, don't don't even talk about Coach C, bro. His Raiders got goose egged on Sunday, the very next day. Oh, so he was yeah, really right. hating football. <laughs> I don't know. This game's tricky, man. UNLV bringing the quarterback back on the road. They they want to they want to bury us under the ground. It's going to be tricky not to succumb to a team that hey they got nothing to lose. Yeah, our guys better be up. Right? That's about it. <laughs> they could lose this game. So I mean, we could definitely lose the game. But... Yeah. That is one thing nice about the Chargers not being in San Diego anymore is you don't have to worry about having that double gut punch on a weekend <laughs> make you just like hate football for like a week <laughs> yeah i will say though that they had a they had a running back that went off against notre dame um courtney reese rushed 11 times for 142 yards damn yeah i meant to try to watch that game but i i got distracted who's their quarterback like brumford or what's his name that's brumfield. Brumfield. brumfield yeah brumfield. so we'll see uh, i'm not I'm not overly concerned. I just want to have a good time. I just want to have a good time and do hood rat things with my hood rat friends. <laughs> I'm not excited, but as soon as I get there, as soon as I get into town Saturday and, and meet up with you guys, I'll be like, yeah, it'll start. Feel, I'll start feeling it again. I'll be like, yeah, let's go watch this game. <laughs> <laughs> so the one thing we can feel good about after that Fresno game and coming into this UNLV game are all the reports all the national headlines that are making their way, the Big 12 signs their media deal, and now the Pac-12 looks like they're on the verge. We're getting these tweets from Kanzano and Melner and everybody saying, oh, it looks like a newsy, newsy day or something, you know, pertaining to the Pac-12. And then you got Greg Flugar putting out his latest YouTube podcast. I don't know if you saw that one, Dan, talking about how San Diego State, they are – in the perfect storm. The perfect storm is brewing for San Diego State. Those Are you trying to do an impression of him? No, no. Is that how he sounds? Uh, uh, you kind of sounded like him there first. Uh, <laughs> like the worst YouTube I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but he's not bringing anything to the table, dude. Like, like he doesn't even mention his, his source anymore. Now it's just everything he says is just... He is the source. He, yeah. He's just the opinion piece. Like... <laughs> Right. He's he's just one of those guys that yells in the microphone. Also, so I can't yeah. I can't handle that, dude. <laughs> like uh, the freaking uh, announcer, um, Turban man. Oh my god! Dude. Enough with Turban hate. Leave him alone. <laughs> <laughs> and that like freaking that Papadakis, man. I've had enough of Papadakis too. It, it, you know what, dude? I can actually deal with Papadakis. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> At, at, I mean, at least he yeah. sounds like he's excited about the he's, game. You know? He's better than Turbin, yes, but <laughs> that's called damning with faint praise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, the point is nobody else, not Fresno, not UNLV, not Boise, nobody else is being talked about when it comes to expansion and the possibilities. So what do you guys think, man? I mean, are we on the verge of, of joining somewhere sometime soon? I believe so. Yeah. I just think it's going to take longer than I think the deal that the Pac-12 ha has is to be really complicated uh, with Amazon and every person that I, I think could have inside sources or has seems to have inside sources all believe that like, San Diego State will be there. But, dude, it would help if we didn't blow games against Fresno State. Like, <laughs> like I know it's bigger than that. But I'm just saying, like, perception wise, dude, like, yeah, because another thing is, is there was like two hundred and twenty five thousand viewers for that game from what I saw. So Halloween, uh, Halloween weekend. Halloween yeah, Saturday, I know. I, nobody's not, watching that. Not even our fans were really watching that game. 
Dude, I mean, you, you say that, and yeah, that obviously we want it to be better, but um, our boy uh, uh, Matt Last Brewer put out that uh, he talked about, I think, Houston and... I knew you were going to bring that. I saw the same tweet. Yeah, <laughs> Houston and... Uh, B, no, Houston and somebody, UCF, I don't remember who the hell he was talking about, but two of the future Big 12 teams played and had even less, and it was like yeah. a, noon, a noon start, so... Well, yeah, I'm just saying, like, come on, dude, how like, try to help us out a little bit here who's trying to go <laughs> to the conference, you know? We're having, like, the most discouraging football season ever, dude. Like, make it a little bit easier. And it's, like, the most funky football season in the midst yeah. of what could, what could be, like, the most transformational news in the history of the program. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's so funny. If it, it's, it, it, it's so true, dude. <laughs> But no, I, I mean, I'm confident. I, but I'll, I, you know how like Mateo was going off the deep end, like on text, like a week or so ago or two yeah. weeks. I think we all go through that at different times because you're reading some reports and you think something's gonna happen, and then when it doesn't, you're just like, "Fuck this shit!" <laughs> I'm I done. To- Let's go to the Big Twelve. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that was me exactly. I was. I texted both of you guys. So look, San Diego State needs to go to the Big Twelve. Pac twelve doesn't want us. I don't want to be somewhere we're not wanted. Big Twelve, they want us. They want to expand. They're gonna show us love. They get excited. Their football is exciting. Their basketball is great. We deserve to be there. And I kind of still do feel that way. But I'll take either one to be honest with you. I mean, dude, I do kind of dig the excitement of the Big Twelve, the, the schools. Yeah, um, but I mean, it's still not optimal from a ge- ge- geographical standpoint. And like, I want to represent the West. I want to be like, I want to like be. I want the. I want the West to be the best. You know, like I want yeah. be part of a Western Conference. That's great. But not even UCLA and USC want the West. So I mean, listen. Like well, UCLA, we we all saw their. Well, I mean, they're kind of getting a little pissed and. Who knows? It might be a long shot. They may end up going back to Pac-12. I highly doubt it. I mean, I don't but care about USC if we had a trouble because that's the only chance we have in, anyways. Yeah. Right, right. That's what's made us desirable now to both of these conferences. Yeah. If we had a travel partner, though, to go to the Big Twelve, a Western travel partner, that would e- that would kind of like ease that transition, right? Dude, I don't understand the travel partner thing, honestly. Like, okay, like, like baseball. Baseball has to go play UCF, right? What the hell does a travel partner do for that? What is, what's the benefit? You, you're adding one more team in the Western time zone. So, like, I, I would propose UNLV, SDSU both join the Big 12. You'd be right there with BYU, Houston, so, you know, some of those Western teams that you kind of align yourselves with in a division. Dan, to explain it is the theory is that it could say, say UCF, like you mentioned, when they fly to play San Diego State, they could play San Diego State and whatever Western team to save them on travel money. And so oh, so they wouldn't they, go back; they would stay yeah, for like the week. They would stay or, for the they would stay for the two games, that kind of thing. That's what they mean when they say travel partner. But in this modern age, it's really it's kind of pointless. It's not like air travel isn't like what it used to be, or it was like a big thing. And it was mainly for like basketball and stuff like that. But like all the basketball teams charter now, pretty much anyway. So. Um, yeah, it's it's not really an issue, I don't think. But like, here's what I would say to you, Mateo. You're talking about you prefer the Big Twelve. Like, you're excited to go to Lubbock and Aim, or yeah, Ames, Manhattan. <laughs> I will uh, say, I am, I am definitely. <laughs> you're more I excited would... to do that than than uh, than uh, freaking um, goddamn it. Uh, yeah, Tucson you can't even think of them. You can't even think Tucson of them. Yeah, I know. Phoenix. Dude, I want to go. Dude, those are real college towns. They might be shit. <laughs> no, but you don't think it would be fun to like go to go watch them at Iowa? It'd be State cool to go once. Be popping. It'd be cool to go once for like an out of conference game, but, yeah, not, but like, I don't want to share a conference with those those cities. But there's like 16 teams. I mean, <laughs> you go once, dude. That's all you need to go. <laughs> so, I'm no, all, dude, I'm you watch the those games, dude. The atmosphere is it's crazy. Yeah. You see the student yeah. sections. It would be like that Utah shit we saw. That's what it would be like at those at those games. I feel like if we were to join the Big 12, if San Diego State were to join the Big 12, we would be jumping into 
a conference that's fan bases are already on fire. Like the fight, we would be jumping into the fire. If we were to join the Pac-12, we would be on fire because we would be so excited to be a part of playing Cal and Stanford and Arizona State. But you go there, I mean, there's not many environments like a Utah or a Oregon, right? I mean, these are rabid fan bases, but you go to Cal, they, they could care less. They're sitting up there on, you know, the hill watching the game and not wanting to but, pay. Uh, but unfortunately, Mateo, that is – San Diego State's culture as well. Exactly. How's, how's, how's I guess fit, we, we fit in that. Matt, the reason those the reason those teams are in the Big Twelve is because their culture has been like that this entire yeah. like in the since the beginning of college football. I and here, here's the thing: is like if we jumped into the Big Twelve, we would immediately be the worst fan base in the conference. It, it wouldn't absolutely, be absolutely. <laughs> but you would have to. You would have to. You would have to sink or swim, right? If you put your fan base in that environment where everything else is on fire you're gonna catch a fire your fan base is gonna catch a fire you're gonna be motivated to compete or get burned <laughs> or, or get burned or get burned but i would rather be surrounded by that fire and catch on fire than go to the pac 12 and play against you know these stanfords and oh, i love and, I, that, I want to use those teams as an example yeah well, who, I mean, who else would you use i mean arizona i mean first of all you're, you're, arizona you're State. About, but you're talking about academic elites, so those are like right. yeah. it, there's something to be said for playing Cal and playing playing Stanford. So, um, yeah, it would be I exciting mean, to us. It would be exciting to us. It, no, you oh, know, I mean, obviously exciting. exciting the administration too. You know who would be excited? Right, the right. most excited about playing Cal and Stanford would be <laughs> Adela de la Torre. Yeah. Be the most <laughs> all the all the research, all the research professors and, and assistants and everything like that. They would be stoked to share a conference with those schools and to get into that, that, that research trust and, and rub elbows with those types of schools. So like they, they would be more on fire th about that than we would be on fire about going to play at, you know, Stanford stadium and, and uh, Memorial, Co whatever the hell the name is that stadium in Cal, <laughs> that terrible stadium in Berkeley. And, and I, I understand that. I agree with that. I wouldn't be mad at that. It'd be a great thing for the university. But at the end of the day, when we're talking about football, basketball, baseball, sports in general, like I could care less about those things. Like I want to play sports at the highest level in, when it comes to football and basketball. And if that means bringing up the energy and the passion with the fans, playing on a bigger stage, especially basketball, we get to play BYU every year in football and basketball again. Like that, that would be very enticing for me academically. Whether, I mean, we join like, the big, yeah. whether we join the Big 12 or Pac-12, academically, San Diego State is going to keep climbing. Like, they don't, they're not depending on the Pac-12 right now to elevate their academics. So if they join the Big 12, like, it's not going to hinder their academics. But joining they're the Pac-12. keep improving. Joining the Pac-12 would put the academics on steroids. Yeah. So it, it would exponentially improve the academic standing of the institution. So that's... Just perception that's, alone. Yeah, that's, that's, it's not even... It's not even close. It's the most applied to one of the most applied to universities right now. Imagine with the academic cachet they would get from joining the Pac-12, the way it would raise the the acceptance rates and all that kind of stuff, man. So, yeah, dude, it, it, that, I think it can't be understated the impact off the field that the Pac-12 would have on San Diego State as an institution. So here's my fear with that. And it's completely selfish. It's completely probably completely bogus when it comes to academics right i don't want to turn into one of those academic elites to where we don't care about football to where that stadium just turns into you know a money-making machine for the university but they really don't invest it in the football team they don't really try their hardest I mean, to win it's not i don't want that i mean look at look Michigan. at all these pac-12 teams at Notre Dame, all these pac-12 teams are so stale man i don't know uh, UW, uw has a good fan base and they yeah. do and they, they're a great school I don't uh, think our institution would allow that to happen. I, I think they there's still a, a like look at they kept the fire burning for Aztec football even through some really shitty times and really tight budget times. They still emphasize Aztec football, so I, I don't see that happening with going to the Pac-12. We just built a new stadium. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They they just built a new stadium. I, I think that shows the commitment to football, dude. Good. All right.
right. That's what I want to <laughs> so hear. Look, at, I, 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 hear. I think, dude, I actually think Big 12 would be fun too, though. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to go to those Hobunk cities and uh, live it up, dude. Honestly. <laughs> Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. What else? Anything else? I, I think that's pretty good. I, I don't know what else we need to cover on. Basketball season is here, guys, you know? Yeah, I'm excited to see this basketball team, man. And you, you know me, I'm not a big basketball guy, but this team's got me pumped. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I was telling you guys before, I think it, like this team has a chance to like capture the city like the Padres did. So like if you get off to a strong start, it could get, it could be re- like, it could be really crazy. This could be like that 2020 year, man. Except they'll get the, a chance to finish the deal this time. But with that being said, man, I got to bounce, dude. I got to say goodnight to the kids. <laughs> On behalf of the guys, Mateo San Diego, Dirtball Dan, K5 James, get your Sons of Monty Kiss the Rings hoodies and t-shirts right now. SonsofMontezuma.com. We'll talk to you guys after the UNLV game. Go Aztecs. Go Aztecs. Peace. Later, guys. Later.